Hi there. Now, in the fourth part of this question, we've got to find an expression for the inverse function of f of x and state the domain of the inverse function for five marks. Now, just as a reminder, in the first part, we had to express 2x squared minus 12x plus 13 in this particular form. And this is the answer we got. And also, for the value of k, which is now given to be 7, we were asked to find the range of the function f. And that answer was f of x is greater than or equal to 27. So you may find these parts then useful when doing part 4. So if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. OK, welcome back if you had a go. Now, we do need this particular form of the function f of x. And to find the inverse function of f of x, what we do is we let any x's in our equation here become y's. So we just say let x equal 2, lots of y minus 3, all squared minus 5. And then we rearrange this to make y the subject. If you're unfamiliar with inverse functions, you can always check this out on my website, okay, where we carry out this kind of operation. So if we make y the subject, I'm going to add 5 to both sides, and that will give me x plus 5 equals 2 lots of y minus 3, all squared. And then if I divide both sides by 2, I'm going to get x plus 5, all divided by 2, equals y minus 3, all squared. And then if I take the square root to both sides, I end up with y minus 3 then equaling, and it will be plus or minus the square root of x plus 5, all divided by 2. Now, if I want to make y the subject, all I need to do now is add 3 to both sides. So, therefore, y would equal 3 plus or minus all of the root of x plus 5 divided by 2. Okay? Now, when it comes to working out the inverse function of f of x, then we've got to decide which one of the plus or minus parts we take. And to answer this question, it's best if we just look at the sketch graph of y equals f of x and look at the inverse function. Now, in the earlier part, when we were talking about finding the range of f, because it was only valued at x equals 7, the value of k here, we found that the range of f was anything greater than or equal to 27. So we had this point here. This is not drawn to scale, but let's say this point here has coordinates 7, 27. Okay? And that curve for f of x looks something like this, coming up like that. Okay? So this was y equals f of x. Now the reason I've done this here is because we should be familiar with the fact that if you look at any inverse function, then it's always a reflection of the original function in the line y equals x. So if I was to draw the line y equals x in, which would we'll just say, say something like that, y equals x, then if we were to reflect this in the line y equals x, it would be a point over here, okay, and the curve would look something like this. And so this would be the graph of y equals the inverse function of f of x. And this coordinate here has to be a mirror image of 727. So it's going to be 27 comma 7. And this will help us to establish whether we take the plus or minus value here. 
we know that y has to be greater than or equal to 7. You can see it from this graph here. The y values are greater than or equal to 7. So if we're to get values that are greater than or equal to 7, we must take the positive value here. You can see if we were to put 27 in for x here, 27 plus 5 is 32, divided by 2 is 16, and then we've got the square root of 16, which is 4, so you want to have 3 plus 4, which is going to give us the 7. If we take the negative option, 3 minus 4, we're going to end up with values below 7. So, therefore, what we've got is the inverse function of f of x must be equal to 3 plus the square root then of x plus 5, all divided by 2. And what would the domain be? Well, the domain is going to be all the values of x greater than or equal to the 27. So we'll just say that the domain okay, is essentially x is greater than or equal to 27. Alright?